Good morning. So hopefully you're here for grasp a graph. Um, hopefully you've read the rules, but just in case you have it, I'm going to go over them and, and point out a few things I've got highlighted here. So this is um, this event is is testing um, your ability to interpret graphs and also graph um, graph a set of data. Now we are limiting it to graphs that the kids should be exposed to, so it'll be pictographs, uh, pie chart, bar graphs, and line graphs, and then a Venn diagram. Now, um, let me, in terms of rules, they should bring pencils. They should bring a colored pencils um, are preferred in terms of how they can distinguish the different sets of data on the back on the graph. Um, a non programmable calculator, no phones, um, a ruler. Definitely they would need a ruler for whoever's doing the graphing and the person who's interpreting graphs might want a ruler to help them too. Again, no phones or scrap paper. We will provide a piece of graph paper for them and only one piece of graph paper for them. So if you know they need to know how to handle if they make a mistake because they're only going to get one piece of graph paper. Now you are allowed to have one or two students and we we've had as little as one and they can finish. Um, but if there are two students, we do let them work in parallel so they can tear the test apart and work on different sections um, simultaneously. Um, moderate, you know, really quiet whispering is OK. I won't assume you know they're cheating if there's moderate whispering, but it's a test, right? So they need to know they're not interfering with with others around them. The test is two parts to it, two main parts. So there will be about 35 to 40 multiple choice questions answering um, questions that are interpreting one of the types of graphs. And then, the, whoops, sorry about that. The second part of the test, there's a set of data and a piece of graph paper, and you'll need to graph that set of data. And we'll go over um, some of the important details that we're looking for when we're grading that graph. Okay, and score wise, it ends up being that the first section is worth about 60%, and the second section about 40%. Um, the multiple choice questions have to be transferred onto a zip grade. So when time's up, whatever's on their zip grade is what we're going to score. They can't transfer it after the fact, so make sure they know that. Hopefully they're used to that in, in school, but that is that's important. I have had you know kids at the end who've had nothing on the zip grade, but um, we're not going to give them the extra time to transfer it. So they need to be transferred along the way. I do let them write on the test. They use they can use the test as scrap paper, but again, they need to be transferring it. So people have different methods. Some just transfer it each question at a time. Some transfer it after they finish the test, but either way they need to be conscious of the, the time when they're doing that. Um, if there's a tie, we will defer to whoever scored better in part two. OK. Any questions about the rules? OK. So this is one example of how part one will will come across. So the students will have a graph at the top and then there'll be a series of questions about that particular graph. So this is just one example. It happens to be a Venn diagram and this is one example of a question, uh, the kind of question that we would ask about interpreting a graph. OK. There are. Um, there is a um, PDF out on the website. That has a few more example questions, and then I think there's an old practice test also on the website. Which obviously has 30 or 35 questions in it um, if you'd like more examples. OK. This is an example of how part two is presented them. So there'll be a, a set of data 
and they'll need to and, and then a piece of graph paper and they'll need to graph that data. And so that will look something like this. Oh, this is an example of an actual kids graph, if you will. You'll you'll get um, there is graph paper out on the website too, so you can have them practice on the appropriate size graph paper because that'll make a difference in terms of scale. It happens to be half inch graph paper, and again, there's a um, you can download that on the grasp a graph event uh, folder out on the website. Um, as we talk, colored pencils are preferred so they, they can easily distinguish between the two. If they only have a pencil, they certainly could hash one of, you know, could have hashed one of the two, but this honestly, it's easier for them if they have um, two different colors. Uh, title is graded. They need to have a key. Um, this is what uh, they've got data labels here. These need to be at consistent intervals. They need to have an axis title on both axes and then appropriate data labels. Neatness does count. Um, see here this person you know they tried to be extra neat by putting the line most likely the value was you know somewhere around 205 2010 you know that's, that's close enough as long as they're within you know it looks like they've tried within this this person even gave themselves intermediate ticks so that they could could be as accurate as possible and then um, as they shaded they did their best to stay within the lines Okay. Um, more examples in this handout. This is an obviously an electronic version of of one of the questions. And I'm going over the bar graph because the bar graph is um, the more tedious of the graphs, but there are examples of a line graph out there as well. Again, I just point out here, which you'll have this handout. Um, the axis titles, the data labels, and then the actual rubric that we use is here as well. I think I went through all of those. Um, oh, one scale I didn't show so here. So scale in the case of, let's go back up to the student graph. When we talk about scale, it's like how the graph fills the paper. So if they know um, that's one of the rubric items, so they should plan their intervals so that they can fill the paper as much as possible, but still be able to have appropriate and um, even intervals. You know, we don't want to graph if they, this one went up to 300, if they just did 100, 200, 300, that graph would end up down here. They wouldn't be able to accurately distinguish between one value over another because that 100, so, you know, that would not be appropriate to just use this corner of the graph when we talk about scale. Okay, any questions about the graphing? So also, you know, for me, as uh, Manish mentioned earlier, I was in your shoes way back when. Um, the best way to get them ready is just keep giving them example, sharing example graphs with them and asking just questions about them. Um, you can get examples, you can make up your own examples, you can get examples in their textbooks, and actually their history test textbooks have more examples than their math textbooks of simple graphs. Time for Kids intentionally had articles with graphs in it. I'm not sure if that's given out anymore. Um, the U USA Today always has a graph on the front page. Um, and then these are two websites that offer um, some videos and um, obvious example graphs as well within the videos as they kind of share some tips on on graphing and why you graph and 
and the intent of a graph when you do graph something that you're trying to display information in a quick format way so you can you can quickly get an answer to a question as opposed to having to digest uh, numerical data so um, you could you could use those as well okay with that uh, any questions this is pretty straightforward event If you guys want, you can turn the videos back on too. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs>